shoelace. It floats! <laughs>. I'm Sinead. Today, using household materials, we're going to show you how to make a uh, tension suspended structure, um, applying some of those principles. So the materials we're going to be using today are a pen, a scissors, a ruler that's at least 20 centimeters long because we need you to measure something that's 20 centimeters, some string, the thinner the better because if it's nice and thin uh, your structure will look like it's floating even more. Some tape and then some cardboard. So we've just taken this out of the bin. So any old recycled cardboard box will do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna cut five pieces of cardboard, which are gonna be 100 mil by 100 mil in dimension. So actually this short side is already 100 mil, so that's great. And then I am going to measure 100 millimeters across in this dimension and mark it. And then just draw a line across there that I can cut along. So that's our 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter piece of cardboard and we are gonna make five of those. So the next thing we're gonna make is pieces of cardboard that are a little bit bigger. So they're gonna be 200 millimeters long so if anybody's used to using centimeters, it's 20 centimeters and they'll be 10 centimeters wide. 200 mil or 20 centimeters long. And then 100 mil across the top. So it's twice as big as Laura's and we need four of these all together. Now we have our five pieces of the smaller size cardboard and the four pieces of the larger size. And we are going to turn each of the pieces into a square tube and tape it up. So to do this, first we are going to mark out the four edges of our tube. So since we are about 100 millimeters long, that means I'm going to mark on increments of 25 millimeters. Each marking the side of the square. Went a bit wrong there, but that's okay. I can fix it when I cut it. So um, now we have our four sides marked for each of the edges of the square. Um, because this cardboard is a bit stiff, we are going to score them with the scissors to make it easier to fold. So be really careful when you do this um, and make sure that your scissors, you know, is safe to, to do scoring with. So what scoring means is that you just lightly kind of mark the top surface of the cardboard and you don't cut the whole way through it. And so it works when cardboard is a little bit thicker like this to help you fold it. So that should make it easier to bend. And then we can bend along each line. So then the cardboard is easy to fold into a square tube like this. So then I'm gonna tape that up and you know we have kind of like brown duct tape here but you know you can try it with um, other type tape too. So then I'm gonna hold it in the square position and then just tape along the edge. And then I can fold it on the inside like that. So that's our first kind of small uh, square tube and we're going to do the same for each of these. So then for the bigger ones, it is pretty much the same, but we're going to show you how to do it. Uh, and make sure that you do it on the small side. We definitely don't want to fold on the other way. Um, we'll show you why later. So the same as Laura's, we're 100 mil on the top. So we mark off in 25 millimeter 
increments. So you do 25, 50, 75, and the hundreds on the edge. The nice thing about using card like this is that there's lots of straight lines in it, so you know you're straight. And again, we're gonna score. And fold along those. And hopefully, makes a sort of square. So then the bit of tape for this will have to be a little bit longer. So that's the long piece. And you're gonna do the same thing for the other three. So you'll end up with four long tubes and five short tubes. So now we have our five short square tubes and we have four of our longer square tubes. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the bottom half of our sculpture, which is this guy. So we need two long pieces and three short pieces. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is line up the bottom three. And now our square tubes are not perfect, yours might be a bit better. Um, but what we really want for the bottom one is your most square one. So maybe actually we could look at these. I think this one is probably the most square. So we're going to pick this one for the base. And then these two are pretty good. And they're just going to go together like that. And we're going to tape them. So we cut some pieces of tape just so they're ready here and we're going to tape on the top first of all like this. Now I find it easier just to snip the tape slightly so then you can just fold it straight down like that. It just makes it a bit easier and then we're going to do the same on this leg and then again we can snip it so it folds down slightly and then we'll do the same on the reverse so you can see there's still a little bit loose and we want to make sure that they are really rigid especially for the base. Then the next bit we're going to do uh, is the long bit up here. So we need the next long bit and this short bit's going to go on top and it's important that you do it this way. You'll see why later because everything needs to go in together properly. So it is important if we tell you to do put this on top you definitely don't do that or it won't match up later. So we're gonna do it this way. And just put it on the side like that. And as you go, if things do feel a little bit loose, you can feel free um, to reinforce it with a bit more tape. Especially if you're using thinner tape, we've got quite thick tape. If you're using thinner tape, you might find that you need to use a bit more. And that's totally fine because what we want is for these to be pretty solid. So then the last thing that we need to do to make it look like this, we're just going to put it on top. So I'm going to, and really we want to make sure it's in the middle. So I guess we could measure it. And our long bit is 200 mil. We know there that we're aligned with the 100 mil in the middle. I'll just hold that there and Laura can tape it. So we're not being too precious with the tape at the moment. Um, you can use different ways of doing this and you know if you want to cut it differently to make it neater. And then we can give it you know a little bit of a check to make sure it's stable enough. <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay, so the next bit, and we're nearly getting to the fun bit with the string, but we need to make one more piece of the sculpture, which is gonna be the bit that hangs. Like that, like that, I can't remember. We're gonna have to see. Uh, so we're gonna use the last two long bits and the last two short bits. So again, we wanna kinda fiddle stuff around so it feels like it's gonna fit properly. Um, and again, we wanna try and get into the middle and the safest way to know you're in the middle is to measure it um, and line that up with the middle. So Laura's going to tape that one. 
And then the next two, so we've got this long bit and this bit on the top. And again, as I was saying in the last one, it is important that we get the taping right. So we want this long bit and this short bit on top of it like that. And they're gonna slot in together like that. So we don't wanna go on top, we wanna go on the side. There we go. Maybe for this one you might see if uh, you can prop it against something if you're not able to hold it and tape it at the same time. So now that is the finished piece. So now we're on to the fun bit, which is going to be using the string to tie the whole thing together and suspend it. So we have uh, four pieces of string. Two pieces are going to be 90 centimeters long. Um, if you have a 30 centimeter ruler, um, you know, you can measure that out by doing it three times to get to 90. And we also have two pieces of 60 centimeter string. Now, the easiest way to tie this um, to uh, your sculpture is going to be by lying the sculpture down. So you can see the two pieces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one first and put it kind of upside down like that. And then this one can rest on top of it. And then they kind of balance each other out, which is a good start. Now to set them out so we know how long we want to keep our string lengths to, we're going to check that it's 270 millimeters from the inside to here. So Sinead's going to um, have a go at tying it together. Okay, so I'm going to take the two longer bits. So these are the 90 centimeters, the 900 millimeters. And these are going to go from this point on the base to this point on the top, on both sides, here and here. So I'm just going to flip this one up first, because it's a bit easier. So on the bottom, we're just going to do a really simple double knot like that and then just pull the knot into the middle so that when we pull up, it's pulling up on the middle. The same on the other side. Double knot, nice and tight. Pull up like that. Okay, so then we're gonna lie them back down. Re-measure, Laura, please. Yeah, so 270 from inside to inside as well. It doesn't have to be too exact, to be honest. It's only to try and um, start from a good point. And if they shift a bit, it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. So we need to keep everything really tight. Do a knot that's gonna be easy to undo because we might need to tighten everything later. It's kind of like when you're tying your shoelace. You just pull that through like that. So then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna try and do the other one the same length. Do the same as if you're tying your shoelace. Pull that through. So, the very last step is the hardest step. We're gonna have to tie one more string and then this will hang. Our last string is actually split into two strings, just to make it a bit easier. So, we tie one around the bottom and again, it's like we did on the base, just double knots and then we want that to be in the middle. And then we do the same with the other one string everywhere. So when it's finished, you can cut all the bits of string off and it'll look really neat. So it's important to try and find the balance, which can be quite tricky. We know it needs to be around here. So Laura's going to hold it and I'm going to tie it. And you guys might find when you're doing it, um, if you think that one of these strings ends up longer than the other, then just play around with it. That's why we say you have these knots that are easy to undo. You think she knows right that about the right length? Mm -hmm. Shoelace. It floats! <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here that we have like a lot of excess string from tying. So you can kind of cut off the excess string. You can see that like this leg here is basically hanging this piece and then what's stopping this overturning is these two strings. You can see that ours might be a little bit wonky and yours might be a bit wonky too, but that's fine. But you can move it around and the most important thing is that these end up tense and that 
you don't do what we did, which was to tighten this one too much in the first go. But again, just uh, loads of attempts like we had, and you'll get it eventually. Um, so we can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, you'll see information for how to share um, your attempts with us. Thanks very much. Thanks guys, bye.